No. The safety of a ship at sea has always depended on a lookout. Their ability to pick up boys, landmarks, and other vessels is greatly reduced by bad weather. Now, all this has been changed by radar. It can see equally well in all weathers, and by night as well as by day. For over a hundred years, Gills and Hughes have made aids to marine navigation. They have gained immense experience in the manufacture of these precision instruments. Now, all this experience is being embodied in the manufacture of the newest aid, radar. Intensive research since the end of the war has resulted in Kelvin Hughes now being able to produce a radar set that fulfills the standards laid down by the Ministry of Transport. Just explain what happened. 
patterns on this installation diagram. When I pressed the button, the generator was automatically started up by the action of this starter unit. By the way, there is a meter on the starter unit which logs the number of hours the set has been used. The output of the generator is taken to the display unit here and the aerial unit here. At the end of the warming up period, a switch here will automatically close and bring the set into operation. The pulses are produced in the aerial unit and fed to the scanner here. These pulses are, of course, sent out in a narrow beam which sweeps over the area surrounding the ship as the scanner rotates. As a check on the overall performance, a monitor signal unit is fitted, usually aft, which gives a standard length signal on the screen. The returning echoes from objects in the path of the beam are detected by the receiver, which is also in this unit, and passed down to the display unit. In this unit, the signals due to echoes are amplified and fed to the cathode ray tube, where they are used to produce the paint of PPI picture of the area around the ship. Now let's see what's happening. There's an illuminated dial with the letters MOD on it that comes on when the three minutes are up. There you are. That's the trace. You have to adjust it for brilliance and focus. should be focused so that it's sharply defined and the brilliance adjusted so that it's just visible on the screen. There's a grid which can be lit up to show bearings. It is marked off in five degree division. This is the knob that regulates the bearing grid. There's also a heading line. It has to be adjusted to line up with the ship's head. That means setting it to zero on the bearing grid, because these are relative bearings, aren't they? Yes, that's right. But if you carry a repeating compass, the radar set can be coupled to it, and the display on the PPI will be oriented so that true north is always at the top. Now, the heading line indicates the bearing of the ship's head, and it will move with every operation of course. When this is in operation, a dial here is illuminated. Well, that's pretty good. Now, what about range scale? Well, the display can be adjusted for three ranges, 27 miles, 9 miles, and from 1 to 5 miles. The last one is variable throughout. And the scale in use is shown on this left-hand dial. By brightening the trace at regular intervals, we produce a number of concentric rings by which you can judge your range. There are 4,000 yard intervals on the 27 mile scale, at 2,000 yard intervals on the 9 mile scale, and at 1,000 yard intervals on the 1 to 5 mile scale. They are brought into operation by a switch on the right hand side. There is also a range marker. It is controlled from here. By adjusting it until it cuts the object whose range we want to know, we can read off the distance on a dial on the right hand side. Now let's see the picture it paints of our immediate surroundings. The shortest range is variable from one to five miles. This is the picture we get at one mile. You can see the banks of the river on either side and shipping in the river itself. The center of the tube face represents the ship's position, and it shows us lying alongside the jetty. On this short 
range, it is often difficult to get a bearing on very close objects. To help get over this, we have a device known as center expand. The center of the scale is expanded to a diameter of one inch. This distorts the picture a bit, and it no longer represents the scale plan of the area. But you measure your range in the ordinary way, because the calibration rings expand too, and bearing is not affected. Now about the clutter control. By turning this knob, we can reduce the echoes from nearby objects. Using the choppy C, it prevents clutter, that is echoes from waves, from interfering with the set's performance. This light shows whether it is on or off. You see it is very simple to use and requires no technical knowledge at all on the part of the officer of the watch. And it gives some information that no other navigational instrument can give. The knobs are of different shapes to make it easy to work the set in the dark. Once the set has been adjusted, there are only three which have to be used. Well, thanks very much. It's most interesting. Well, we'll certainly try it out today. And I'll leave you, Mr. Gray, to look after everything else. Yes. And of course, you'll be sitting with us. Yes. What is the performance of the set? That is, with regard to range. Well, that depends on the height of the scanner and the height of the object. Now, at the average height of 40 to 50 feet, you can pick up a second class boy at over a mile and follow it down to 40 yards. A small boat can be picked up at three quarters of a mile and a small ship at 8 miles. Large ships of over 20,000 tons can usually be picked up at 20 miles, depending on their height above water. Well, what about landfalls? We've had reports of the sheer rocky Norwegian coastline being picked up at 27 miles, and the approaches to the time at 20 miles. Are there many ships being fitted? Yes, quite a number. We've got sets and coasters, trawlers, Perrys, liners, and they're proving their worth over and over again. Well, I'm only too anxious to try it out too. I'll see you later. Right <laughs> Yeah. 